What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here today to discuss modern NFL quarterback nonsense, craziness, whatever you want to call it. Most people know I don't like carrying football cards in the season. There's just too much wild and craziness that happens. And this time of year is no exception. The shine comes off these players extremely quickly. That I don't know that it makes sense holding any quarterback for air quotes long term for active players. I think there's windows to move in and out of these guys, and that's the best way to approach it. That, that's just been my take on it this whole time. I prefer to use the offseason for stuff like that when I dive into football. Is there money to be made in season? Absolutely, but it is a dangerous game. And one of the biggest problems I think we have, uh, Card pod, Talk Pod talked about this this week, and it's something I've discussed before. And we'll, we'll dig into it specifically with the AFC quarterbacks. Uh, and we'll kick things off with Josh Allen here. Josh Allen's prices are getting hammered so far. This is 14 days. Uh, market movers, link in the description down below if you want to check it out. This is where all the charts and graphs come from. Uh, his stuff is getting hit pretty hard out of the gates. This is going back just 14 days. His Opticalo PSA 10 down 35. His base prism down 20%. Uh, his base optic down 34%. My logic for the cards that I chose on this were just ones that had recent sales to it because I needed something that sold at least once or twice in the last week to kind of see how big the drop actually was. Some of the cards that I wanted to use haven't sold since he lost, so it didn't make any sense to use those. Uh, but this is what we're seeing for these three, and these are three of his more popular cards. Yes, it's two base cards on a hollow, but base still does pretty well in football. As you can see by those prices, you know, 400, 440 bucks for a, a base Prism PSA 10 is still pretty strong in the ultramodern market. But he loses one game, and immediately people are fire selling. Uh, you know, you could say justifiably so. He's had a couple cracks at this now, hasn't been able to get there and get it done. To me, the real problem is you could put him in this category, you could put Lawrence in this category, Herbert, to a lesser extent, Burrow and Mahomes. But the biggest problem is all those names I just read off are all very good football players. They all play in the AFC. It's going to be really hard for these guys to rack up rings, which is what is baked into these prices when your competition is so stiff. Look at Mahomes alone. Mahomes is really good. My biggest problem with Mahomes has always been how much is already baked into his prices. Yeah, he has MVPs. He has Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVPs. He's fantastic. He's a great player. The problem is the expectations that are baked into his price point. We'll look at his cards in a few minutes. And it's the same thing with Allen's. But specifically, the AFC is so loaded that these guys just knock each other off. So how are you supposed to pull a Brady and win multiple Super Bowls in a row? At least in the short term, I just don't see it happening. These guys are going to cannibalize each other. And that's not even talking about if you get there, whoever's waiting for you from the NFC side. Right now, the AFC seems a lot stronger, a much younger crop of quarterbacks. But on the other side, I mean, Jalen Hurts is really good. The Eagles are really good. The 49ers are really good. They're not just going to sit and lay down. So even if you're an AFC team and you make it, it's not a gimme. You still got to go win that game, too. But these guys are going to continually knock each other off, and there's just so much baked into their prices. So much. So Allen failed. He's going to get di dipped down. You've already seen it. The question is, is how far does he go down? Uh, is there you know, a buy-in point at the bottom where his stuff starts to tick back up towards summer? They make a couple off-season moves. Oh, my God, here come the bills again. Or, you know, where are you at with Josh Allen? Have we seen enough to say, you know, He's just not going to get it done. He's a really good quarterback, really good quarterback, one of the best in the league, but maybe he never wins a Super Bowl. That, that is 100% in play. It really is. So we'll see how far his stuff dips. His stuff's basically down 20 to 30% already just a week after, not even a full week after the game. 
So we'll see where, you know, how long it takes for his stuff to kind of bottom out. Uh, next up, let's take a little peek at Herbert. Uh, we have a little bit of a bigger sample size on Herbert. Was able to pull more cards, and then obviously he had an extra week um, from the loss to uh, this week because he got knocked out in the wild card round. Herbert stuff down slightly, not getting hit as bad. Uh, you can see his rookies contender auto PSA 10 is down 800 bucks from 5k to 4.2. His optic hollow that shows up 30%. That seems to be one very rogue sale. So I don't know if someone got a little click happy or what the deal there is. Uh, but if you eliminate that one, it just happened to be the last one, then it falls more in line with this other stuff. So we'll have to see what the next one goes for. Field level silver down 30%, optic hollow down 12%, silver PSA 9, uh, no 10s have really sold recently, so I went with 9, down 10%, and his base prism basically staying flat. So Herbert not getting hit is bad. I would have really liked to see a coaching change there, but that didn't happen. Uh, we brought a new OC in, but uh, their, their coach is still there, and I don't know how I feel about that one. Herbert seems like a compiler. And the Chargers seem like the bigger problem there than Herbert does. You know, we'll see how things play out as we move through the offseason in the next season. But he's another one. Just a lot of stuff baked into that price. You know, how many rings do you need to, to win to justify a $4,000 price tag on your contender's rookie ticket auto in a PSA 10? And how many are reasonable for him to get? All these guys are young. Mahomes' rookie year was 2017. He's not that old. He's going to be around for a while. Joe Burrow, really good. That team, really good. He's going to be around for a while. Even Josh Allen has not been in the league that long. He's going to be around for a while. And we're not even talking about Lamar Jackson. If, if he can ever get it turned around, plus the rookies coming in this year, the next wave. Uh, it's just, it's very tough when there's so much baked into these prices. And in football, the rings really do matter. Next up. Trevor Lawrence, the new golden boy. The new golden boy. His stuff also taking a beating for the most part. You can see the Optic Hollows stayed flat there. But his Silver Prism Raw down 50%. PSA 9 down 40%. Did not use a PSA 10 here for those not aware. I've talked about this in the past. Uh, the PSA 10 Trevor Lawrence is a unicorn uh there's like a print issue with that card we'll keep the 10 population super low uh and then i pulled a silver prism auto a handful of these sold also in the raw condition down 20 percent as well so basically down about 20 to 40 percent across the board depending on the individual card he my prediction right now already is he will be one of the hottest names of the national he will be the guy a lot of people are looking for is Trevor Lawrence, especially if they make any sort of splashy offseason move. Uh, they already have Calvin Ridley on the roster that will be making a return this upcoming year from his year-long suspension. I have a feeling T-Law is going to be on that short list of guys coming out of the National that everyone wants a piece of before the season starts. Once again, there's probably an intriguing buy low point at some point here and just hold it through the summer and you'll be able to move off of it at the National, if, if you attend the National, or late in the summer uh, before the season starts. He would be one perfect example if that happened. I don't know that I'd want to carry him in the season. Or maybe you carry him in the season and hope he starts fast and then kind of see what happens, but I really don't like carrying these guys into the season. So but I do think Lawrence is going to be one of the more juicy names come National this summer. Next up, let's talk Jalen Hurts. Let's flip the script a little bit and the guys that are doing good and winning. Here, we have a handful of cards, and I went back, once again, 14 days on this. I think I did 14 days for all this stuff. Opticalo PSA 10 up 20%. Base Prism up 25%. Silver PSA 10 staying flat, actually. Now, one of those is not sold in four days. We'll see what the next one goes for. Rookie Ticket Auto PSA 10. Once again, one is not sold in five days. Uh, but that is sitting at 2.4K. My guess is, is that the next one would sell higher. We just haven't seen one. Uh, the green mosaic, a little color match action. 
up 10%, and then a field level silver up 40%. So basically up about 20% over the last couple of weeks, give or take. His stuff moving extremely well. He was another very popular name at last year's national. I, fearless prediction, sure to go wrong. Uh, I'm going to take the Eagles over the Niners. I just think the Eagles are a little too much for the Niners in regards to them being able to keep up with the Brockster. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I've been very bad with football picks so far this playoffs. Next up, Joe Burrow. Hobby darling, the new hobby darling, I should say. Uh, basically up about 20% across the board, 15 to 20%, depending on the individual card. If they win this weekend, I do expect a price bump. Here's the other thing that I'll say. Fearless prediction to go wrong number two. I, I do think that they win. Uh, a lot of that is just based. I think I would probably pick them regardless. I lean a little bit heavier because of the high ankle sprain on Mahomes. That just seems not ideal to go play on a high ankle sprain. If you are sitting on Joe Burrow, if you have multiples of Joe Burrow, and you were looking to move off of them with the Super Bowl stuff in mind, I personally would strongly consider selling immediately after they win the AFC Championship game. Maybe this does not hold true, but last year, his peak prices were within 24 to 48 hours of the AFC Championship game on most of his cards. I'm not going to say every card, but like the, the stuff that transacts on a fairly regular basis, that was where the peak was. It slowed down as the week went on, or the weeks went on, and then obviously, you know, they lost the Super Bowl, and his stuff took a little bit of a hit. Typically, what we've seen, once again, past performance does not indicate future results. The player, the marquee player that wins a title, uh, this has been the case in basketball and football. Their card prices tend to dip immediately after the event. Part of the reason why is everyone is thinking the same way you are thinking. I have this player. I'm going to wait for the thing to happen, and then I'm going to sell. And the sellers outnumber the buyers, and the price actually dips because so much inventory hits the market simultaneously. And the people that don't want to hold on to the card, they're saying, I have to get out of it now. My plan was not to hold this. I want the cash, whatever the case might be. Then the undercutting starts. They undercut each other to get to the floor as fast as humanly possible to get the card moved. That is what we typically see. It does not mean that's going to happen this year. Maybe he locks in his first one and everyone goes nuts. But if you have some burrows that you're looking to move, if they win the championship game, I would slowly start selling them off. The other problem that you run into as you get closer and closer to the game is people start playing games of their own, especially if you're selling on eBay. They'll bid up the auctions on the day of the game, day before the game, wait to pay to see if they won or not, and then they'll either pay or you'll never hear from them again, and they'll just eat the non-payment strike if they lose. People do all sorts of nonsense like that. So get it sold well before... Yeah, maybe you leave a little bit of money on the table, but you probably won't have to worry about less eBay nonsense, and you might actually not leave money on the table. I would personally, and I own none of these guys, so I have no skin in this game, I would probably look to move shortly after the AFC Championship game if they win and if you were looking to sell Burrow. Or at least sell a couple of them. If you have multiples, let a couple go and then kind of see what happens. But Burrow seems to be separating himself He's Joe Cool. Uh, everyone loves him. Tons of fan appeal. Has a great team. Has Jamar Chase to throw to. Everything, all signs point up arrows for him. He does run into the same problem that we talked about before. The AFC is just loaded. These guys are going to pick each other apart. Next up, Brock Purdy. Pulled his Mosaic Auto, his Mosaic Base, and his Mosaic Silver. Uh, I just went back to the full sales data since this stuff has been out. His Rookie Auto is up slightly up 5%. His Base is holding strong at 42 bucks. It peaked up to 60 It has come back a little bit. Almost 900 of these things have sold already on eBay alone. 
any other couple, there are a couple other sources that market movers pulls from, but a bulk of it is eBay. That's where most of the transactions happen. The silver mosaic is up 20%. A hundred of those have sold. Uh, condition sensitive on those. Mosaic is a super touchy set when it comes to condition. So good luck on those. Mosaic base at $40 is absolutely mind blowing. I get some people were speculating that, you know, Silicon Valley money is what's propping up his prices. I don't know that we know that unless all these cards are getting shipped to San Francisco. Regardless, he doesn't have a lot of cards yet. He will very, very shortly as more and more releases come out. More and more of his stuff is going to hit the market. And Mosaic is not one of the premier sets. It's a fine set. It's got some cool cards, but it is by no means one of the premier sets. When his prism base comes out, or even his optic base, or even some stuff from Select, it's going to overshadow the Mosaic. Some stuff from Mosaic will perform well. Uh, Genesis will always do well. Some of the cool color match stuff will probably perform okay. Uh, but 40 bucks for the base card is just absolute insanity. And even the autograph card, you know, we did the comparison video uh, about a week ago or so. You can go back and check that out. His Mosaic Auto is selling for more than, well, at the time, might not be now, was selling for more than Burrow and Herbert. Same exact card. Uh, and those were graded in some cases. So, uh, Purdy, fun story. I get the narrative street of it all. But what you're really seeing here is supply and demand play itself out in real time. There is a ton of demand for Purdy. There is not a lot of supply because the wax hasn't come out yet. And if your deal in wax, like you're a shop or a breaker, boy, oh boy, are you rooting for the 49ers? Because the longer that this goes on, the more the crazy demand is going to be for Purdy cards, and that's going to drive a lot of money for Wax. Because the 2022 class sucks. It's him and Pickett. And Pickett seems like a perfectly fine quarterback, but this is a feeding frenzy for the Purdster. So, see what happens this weekend. Last but not least, I wanted to touch on Patrick Mahomes. Uh, pulled a silver PSA 9, PSA 10, his optic hollows, 9s and 10s, and his base as well his stuff is actually pre-dipping over the last this once again over the last 14 days most of this action has happened in the last seven i'm assuming it's people wanting to get out of his cards prior to them losing because of the injury maybe he pulls it out and things spike back up again i don't know but you're seeing it across the board basically down five to ten percent depending on the card give or take uh, the red and yellow, I pulled a red and yellow down there. PSA 10, that's down 14%, 7% on the hollow, 2% on the base, 8% on the nine, 10% on the silver. It's kind of back down in that 3.5 K range after it got a little bit of a spike. I think the high ankle sprain sucked a lot of the wind out of his sails. I think a lot of people are starting to bake in the loss and they're trying to exit now before the loss actually happens. Maybe they win and then people will feel foolish about this, but I can see why people are trying to get out of it. Bengals look good. He's hurt. I just think he's going to have a tough time on that ankle. He could prove me wrong. He could prove me wrong. But that's where we're at with Mahomes. And once again, you know, the, we, the same overarching thing that we have been discussing. Mahomes is a fantastic player. There is a lot baked into that 3.6K price tag on his PSA 10 Silver Prism. The question is, because the AFC is so loaded, can he fill out that resume over the next 10 years or whatever his career ends up being? Obviously, none of us know the answer to that question. We can all speculate. But not all these guys are going to live up to expectations. I'll get plenty of comments down below about Mahomes this, Lawrence this, Allen this, Burrow this, Herbert that. And how they're all going to win five Super Bowls. They all can't win five Super Bowls. You can make a case for any single one of them winning in any individual season. I 100% agree with you. The problem is, is being able to repeat it over and over and over again, or at least you know multiple times, even a couple times over the next 10 years, gets tricky because the AFC is just a monster right now. That could shift. It could obviously change on a dime. These all seem like pretty good young quarterbacks. They all seem like they're not going anywhere anytime soon. So that's all I got for you guys and girls today. I'm taking the Bengals. I'm taking the Eagles. Curious for your thoughts and predictions down below. 
Catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.